Welcome to the world of Splatoon 2, where I take on the fresh new story mode called the Octo Valley. Let's get started, shall we? I was first shown news that the great Zapfish was missing, again, and that Callie from the Squid Sisters has gone missing. I tried to get some information out of the civilians, but it didn't amount to anything. I followed a mysterious umbrella down a drain, which turned out to be Mari, who was also from the Squid Sisters. She needed my help to look for the great Zapfish, so I obliged. I was given the hero suit, and now it's prime time to blast some octopi. I found our first level and jumped in. I ended up in some city looking place and was surrounded by skyscrapers. Since this was the first level, it was pretty much a tutorial level. You know, like how to move, shoot, swim, all that fun stuff. I found my first enemy, which is one of those Octo Boys. I greeted him with ink to the face and he turned into an onion ring? I jumped through the ring and got an orange ball. And if this game's anything like the first one, I know I'll need them for upgrades. I killed another guy, flew up to the second floor, found the Great Pyramid of Octopus, toppled it, then soon came across a vault. And as all vaults go, I needed a key to open it. It ended up being a little ways away in the saran wrap box. I unlocked the vault and pushed onwards. After walking for a bit, I came across a new weapon called the Tenta Missiles. In order to use this weapon, all you have to do is locate, lock on, and fire. I got half them, so it's passing I guess. I received another one, and this time I had lots of targets. Apparently you can only lock onto stuff that are inside the circle, so I couldn't rain down fire like I wanted to on the whole stage. I wasn't too disappointed because I like a little bit of a challenge, and I jumped straight in. I think I managed to take down like 4 or 5 before I died. This time, I used the missile was a lot better and almost took them all out. I killed the last few stragglers and flew to victory. And there we go, our first sapfish down. On to the second level. I arrived at some floating rock place just in time for sunset and discovered something new. These were called dash pads, and when you jumped on them, they fling in the direction they're pointing at. I pressed on forwards until I found something called a ride rail, it was basically an automatic zip line. I found some more dash pads, then struggled to jump on a platform, and eventually made it to the spinning ink pole. The real names were called ink pistons, and I'm guessing that touching them meant certain deaths, so I did my best to avoid them. After doing a sick rail grind, I got to taste another new weapon called a stingray. It was pretty cool at first because it shot out a big laser, but I quickly realized that it had the worst control ever. It was so slow just to move around. It was literally easier to go up and kill them manually. I finished off the level by going for a ride, avoiding more of these pistons, and grabbing our second zapfish. It was time for our third level, which took place at this really nice looking beach resort. This level was all about popping balloons and filling sponges. This time, however, the sponges had more of a tactical use. Whenever I was fighting an enemy, I could fill up a sponge and use it to shield me against enemy fire. Although they could shrink my sponge down, so I had to be wary. I came across these Octo guys who were chilling on this grate. Apparently, they thought it was a good idea to have holes on the floor, so I proved them wrong. I made my way up a hill, found a vacuum cleaner called a squeegee, and flew across the sea. I found a brand new weapon called a splashdown. So as soon as I saw a big horde falling from the sky, I let her rip. Clearly, I didn't know how to use it, but no sweat, because I found another one. I tested it out on this one poor unfortunate soul, and erased him from existence. To my surprise, more Octo guys fell from the sky, so I took them out the old-fashioned way. I then made my way up a few walls, and climbed the Grand Sponge Staircase, where my third Zapfish was waiting. I collected it, and it was time to go confront the boss. I landed in some industrial-looking place, which looked to be in the midst of construction. Luckily, the launch pad was good to go, and I flew off towards the arena. A big tentacle appeared and dragged down the Zapfish. The ground suddenly began glowing, and now came the most dangerous Octarian the world has ever seen. Bread? Yeah, I'm fighting an oven. It started sliding towards me. <laughs> it looks so funny. Its main attack was launching bread out the doors on the sides of it. After a while, the timer would go off and the loaves of bread would come shooting out. Once that happened, I climbed off the loaves and started inking up the tentacle. It then exploded and transformed? It also made columns of ink rise up, making the arena a little more hazardous. All I did was stay close to the oven to avoid it, and once the timer went off, it was time to ascend. I got the tentacle once again, and it was time for the final phase. It transformed again and gave the bread armor? It also had a glazing attachment which would block off half the arena. After a bit more running and dodging, the timer went off once more and it was time to put the oven out of commission. It burned all the bread and then soon exploded. I collected the silver thing and got our zapfish. It was now time to fly to our next area. I landed at a place called Suction Cup Lookout, and to me, this place just looked like a rundown warehouse. I found our first entrance and jumped straight in. I arrived at some underground mine looking place fit with green fog, and after walking for a bit, I found this rolled up mat thing. These were called ink furlers, and when you splat them, they unroll giving you a path to walk on. I guess these Octo guys must really like yoga or something, because these mats were everywhere. Similar to the sponges, when enemies hit the mat, it rolls back up, which can get pretty annoying. Like seriously, I'm having a fight with sprinklers over here. Another thing the mats were good for was squat. 
squashing enemies. It didn't matter if you were on the ground or on the wall, the mats will always find you. I then sorta slid down a slide, jumped some gaps, smushed some more enemies, and found the coolest thing I have ever seen. It was a giant ink turret. I had too much fun blasting enemies with it. Die, you octopus fiends! After my fun was over, I swam up the great map towards our first sapfish. Our next level brought us to a place with the craziest highway system I've ever seen. This place was also swarming with huge vacuums. They were the older siblings of the smaller vacuums we saw in the last level. These industrial sized squeegees could clean up anything, even these tentacle boys, so I made sure to stay well away from them. Unfortunately, it wasn't too long until I had my first encounter with one. I wasn't thinking or something and went through this grate and immediately regretted it. After my near death experience, I had the genius idea to try and ride on top of it. I miscalculated the jump and had to make a run for it. I rode this rail to the next platform where I did some good old fashioned splatooning and then ended up in this death trap. I call it that because I got taken out two times, both because of the vacuum. The first death was because I got hit and then bombed right after, and the second one was because I got hit and then shot. I took things real slow and cautious the third time around and managed to make it to the other side. I then unlocked a box, played Indiana Jones, tamed a vacuum, and got our second zapfish. I landed in our next level and got a package from an Amazon delivery drone. This package was from Sheldon, he's like an arms dealer or something. Every so often I had to test a new weapon for him to collect data. The weapon I received is called a Hero Roller, perfect for slamming and paving roads of ink. I soon stumbled upon a roll of hot dogs called Rolonium Bundles. When you hit them, they fly off and explode on impact. <laughs> I like to call this hot dog bowling. One other thing I could do with the roller were these vertical swings, which kind of felt useless. I scaled the wall, pulled some bombs, and made it to these Octoboys where I ran into a slight problem. Terrible aim aside, I didn't know how to take out this owl. The hot dogs were useless against him, and so was my roller. I knew I was missing something, so I went back to the hot dog. Turns out, all I had to do was aim a little higher, and just like that, the owl got dogged. Shortly after, I found the most disgusting thing I have ever seen. These beings were called Octo Hurlers. They attacked by manifesting hot dogs and spitting them out. I was about to Octo Hurl some bleach into my eyes, so I quickly killed it. Unfortunately for me, I had to deal with four more of them. Luckily, there was a stingray nearby to kill him with. Yeah, I still have no clue how to use this thing. I took out the trash and ah, there's another one. I let him go as a warning. Just kidding, I ended him and got our third zapfish. I got into our next level where I got another package. This time, it was a weapon called the Hero Doolies. These double wielding beauties had a much faster firing rate and also allowed me to roll dodge in any direction. These are definitely my favorite weapons thus far. I also learned that you can use them while on a rail. I felt so cool grinding while blasting enemies in boxes. Honestly, it couldn't get any better than this, but it did. If there was another rail beside me, I could jump between the two. I felt as if I was on top of the world. Then suddenly I was at the bottom of the world because I jumped off the rail. The rest of the level was pretty much the same, although I wasn't complaining. Riding on these rails was so much fun. Eventually, I did have to say goodbye though. Our next level brought us to an actual town full of octolings. Our mission here was to find all eight of the mini zapfish. Fortunately for me, they were easy to locate. All I had to do was find the pillars of light. The level went by pretty quick. All I did was hunt down all the zapfish and take out any octoling that got my way. Eventually I found all eight and called it a day. As soon as I landed in our next level, I was gifted another weapon called a Hero Charger. This thing was pretty much a sniper that you have to charge up. Weapon aside, there was some pretty crazy things happening right now. First off, there were these giant tentacle zeppelin things flying about in the sky. And speaking of the sky, it looked like we were in space. There were also these grappling hooks that I could use to cross gaps and scale towers. I made it to the next area where I found one of those propeller platforms. Hitting the propeller made whatever it was attached to move with it. I then grappled my way up, sniped some octoboys, avoided the zeppelins, and flew away. As soon as I landed, I saw a huge huge row of missiles. I grappled my way up and found the source of them. Luckily, someone left this metal box here and I could use it as a shield. I got a stingray, a key, some more disappointment, unlocked the box, and flew to the final scratch. This last bit was all about propellers, which was fine until I got to the last bit where I got really confused. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to get to the sapfish. I kept trying to pull the other propellers towards me so I could climb it, but that never turned out. After way longer than it should have been, I realized the grappling hook and the big arrow pointing to it. I collected our final zapfish in embarrassment. It was now time to take on the boss. I was given the roller and headed for a stadium looking place. The zapfish was taken in an instant and the thing I was least expecting emerged from the pillar of light. A samurai? And if that wasn't weird enough, he was riding on a tiny unicycle. Though there was still more than meets the eye with this guy because he transformed his ink sword into a freaking motorcycle. 
I ended up getting run over. I recollected my thoughts and got busy splatting him up. After a few more hits, I managed to kill him. Tentacle spat it out of his motorcycle, and I bashed that up as well. He respawned, then turned his sword vertical. It was time for round two. His vertical sword meant that he could now attack from a distance, which was pretty grim for me. On top of that, he had a spin move, so I had to be careful when approaching him now. Nevertheless, I got him once more and bashed up his motorcycle. His sword started spinning now, and it was time for a third round to begin. Now that his sword spins, he can literally launch projectiles at me. Unfortunately for him, all that spinning didn't help him at all, and I managed to sneak him and get him. I took out the tentacle, and the poor man couldn't respawn. It exploded, and I got our zapfish. It was once again time to fly off to the next area. This area was called Beaker's Depot, and it reminded me of a cargo ship port. I found my first entrance and got to it. Our first level brought us to a warehouse looking place filled with more octolings. Just like the other level, I had to go and find all eight mini zapfish. Though there was one difference, which was these toxic looking clouds. Rightfully named Toxic Mist, these were set up to try and scare me off. All it took was one shot to get rid of them though. I splatted some octolings, climbed up mats, and got all eight zapfish. Our next level brought us back to the nice beach resort where I was given the hero shot to use. Using this thing felt so much slower than the doolies though. I rolled the rail down and landed on an air mattress. In reality, these things were called bounce pads and would launch me sky high if I jumped on it. I then bounced for a bit, played Lion King, almost died, and flew off. I discovered a new obstacle which were these moving walls. These weren't much of an obstacle because I could just jump over it. Unfortunately, I soon learned that I can't actually land on the walls or swim. I then made my way over these boxes, saw a man unalive himself, tried to heal an enemy ink, and eventually made it to the top of this tower. Here I got to skydive through onion rings, I made it to the bottom and flew to the final stretch. Here the walls had a bit more of an upgrade. They had guards posted on them who kept trying to shoot me. Fortunately for me, it's hard to hit a bouncing target. I made my way to the end and grabbed their second zapfish. A third level started out pretty strong. I was given the hero dualies back so I could finally shoot more than one ink per second. It also looked like we were back underground again, but this time with a small town underneath. Landscape aside, this level was all about playing tag, except I was eternally it. These new enemies called tentahooks were always on the run, and it was my job to chase them down. This one foolishly cornered himself and I killed him. I got a key, unlocked the box, and flew to the next platform. I chased this boy once again and killed him. The next area had more of these running boys who weren't the sharpest spoon in the utensil drawer because they kept running back and forth rather than using the full circle platform they had. I had to put an end to their stupidity. I did some more splatooning, had fun on a rail, killed another running boy, and grinded my way to this platform, which looked like it was going to cause me trouble. Reason being was that I thought I was going to be sent on a wild goose chase with all the platforms everywhere, but it turns out this guy led me straight to the box. He even gave me the key. How nice of him. I made it to the final stretch, and oh boy. Despair aside, look how majestic they look. I went straight in to try and find my key, but with so much room to run around, I knew this was going to get pretty annoying. Oh yeah, they also dropped bombs in case I forgot to mention. I found this Tenta missile, which I made absolutely useless, and managed to get them all in the group for the kill. I ended up with two keys somehow, and was royally confused, but I didn't dwell on it too long. I grabbed a zapfish and was out of there. The next level brought me to space once again, where I got another new weapon. This one was called the Hero Splatter. Once you charge this bad boy up, nothing will survive its bombardment of it. The main gimmick of this level were these drums called ink switches. When you fire ink onto them, they spin, causing a drawer to emerge from the wall. And these drawers are what I use to scale these walls. After a bit more drum and drawer action, I came across a sniper who I swear tried to 360 no scoping. I climbed up a few more drawers and made it to the next stretch. Things were getting more hectic now because I had to avoid these flutters and grapple my way through the area. I then had to find a key, which wasn't too hard. The hard part was actually getting it. Since I had to wait for my gun to charge in order to lay down some ink, I couldn't quickly move around the area. Though after a little bit of prep time and a good opening, I managed to sneak in and get the key. I then banged some drums, avoided flutters, jumped some drawers, and made it to the last leg of the level. For some reason, I thought I could try and balance on the ledge here to try and avoid the flutter, but it quickly proved me wrong. I came back with an actual plan. I waited for an opening and went for it. It was here where I really got stuck. I kept trying to reach that grappling hook, but I could never actually hit it. I actually had to step back and analyze the situation, but in the end, it turns out there was another grappling hook just around the corner. And yes, apparently I can't see arrows. I got our fourth zapfish and waved this level goodbye. I arrived at our next level and received a weapon called a Hero Slosher. This bucket of bursts allowed me to send waves of ink towards anything in my path. It tore through enemies and boxes with ease. I rode my way up to the next area where I spotted a flying fortress. Is it just me, or did these Octo guys get a bigger budget? These fortresses were called Octo Seekers, and would patrol the area looking for any enemies. And you know what happens when they spot you? 
I didn't know, so I had to find out. It followed me around for a bit until it decided to stomp on me. I came to the conclusion that they weren't much of a threat. I rode it for a bit and then left it to its patrolling. It wasn't long before I came across another one, and I also learned that by ducking into the ink, they would fly over me with no problem. I had to unlock this box in order to leave, which wasn't any ordeal or anything. I found the key hidden in this tower, popped open the box, and flew off. I then filled more sponges, popped some balloon fish boys, tried to play the matrix, failed out of distraction, and ended up back with these flying fortresses. It wasn't too bad though, I just did some good old waiting. I also learned that getting hit by a propeller was a minor convenience for the inkling kind. I chilled on the floor, then made my way up to the final stretch, where a fortress was waiting for me. I think this is the first time someone's actually guarded the zapfish. I broke his ankles and made a run for the launch pad. It's also a good thing I can go through these, or else I would have been in trouble. I got our fifth zapfish and showed my way out of the level. I dropped into our next level and was handed the hero charger. I thought this place looked pretty cool. It had a town underneath it, and all these crazy tracks everywhere in the sky. I made my way up this pole, where I found the weirdest thing. It was like an actual car, like a real life vroom vroom car. There was also trains on the tracks too, except they were upside down. I guess gravity doesn't apply to octopuses. I was told that I should hide in case things get tough, but my saying is, things can't get tough when they're dead. I witnessed the opposite of a car wash, then rode my way up. I was pit up against an octoling, which kinda sucked. Since I had the hero charger, I couldn't spray and pray. I had to actually aim. After one bad miss and a near lethal encounter, I just started spamming. It worked flawlessly. I made it to this area that had a sniper doing an internal 360. My gun couldn't reach him, so I had to take the long way around. I made my way carefully around him and took out any ne'er do wells in my way. I eventually got close enough to snipe him goodnight. I took his keys and was out of there. The next area was littered with these buttons that would flip any object they were attached to, kind of similar to the splat switches from the first game. I decided to scope out the environment, but ended up falling off instead. <laughs> I had to find a key in order to unlock this box, so I made my way up this tower where one of these Octo Boys pulled out a minigun on me. I took him and his friends out, pushed a button, and made my way to the top of the tower, where I had to deal with two octolings. I tried to stake out in the corner and bomb my problems away, but sadly that never works. I jumped out and made quick work of the first one, but I had to locate the second one. She walked out and... Oh man, my aim is horrible. We danced around for a little bit before I took her out. I received my key, unlocked the box, and rode my way to our final zapfish. It's boss time! I landed in a really eerie looking place and was given the dualies. I made my way to the arena where, ah, well you know the drill. Out of the light emerged a seemingly a familiar face. A giant cube! Wait, who is this guy again? Apparently he was from the first game, but I have no memory of this guy. He made a mad dash for me and ha <laughs> look at his little legs. This guy was pretty simple. Whenever he made a face plant trying to get me, I just climbed the side of him, giving me easy access to his tentacle. I gave it a good old splatting and was on to round two, where he had something new. He put on a jacket, which now covered his tentacle, and he had a frickin' turret on top of his head. My problem now was that I couldn't climb up the side of him anymore. I had to first remove his jacket, which was a task in itself. I had to shoot the strap holding it together, which of course was on his face, so shooting it meant that I was in the splash zone. You might be thinking, well, why don't you just dodge roll to get out of the way? I... I forgot, okay? I did manage to unstrap him and take him down, so it was all good. The third and final round came upon us, and Boxman had another trick up his non-existent sleeve. Not only does he have a jacket, but he has three faces now. He slipped inside towards me, causing me to fall out of the arena. Luckily, there was a lower floor here, so I had space to catch my breath. I realized that when I was down at this lower part, he couldn't hit me. I also realized I could roll. I just didn't use it well. I then tried to take him back in the arena again, but I quickly got stomped on. I went back to my hideout, where I kept blasting him from below. The strap eventually he burst open once more, and I got to work. I blasted his tentacle for the final time, and he exploded. Again, I guess. I got our zapfish and headed out. We opened the next area, but that'll be a story for another time. I gotta say though, so far, this game is awesome. I'm having so much fun in every level, and it's also nice that I actually know what's happening in the story this time too. I hope that you guys enjoyed this journey with me so far, and will join me next time. So until then, have a good one.